Olá, gostaria de agradecer a Sou Black e a World Keratocone Society. A gente está aqui no Congresso Mundial de Ceratocone, o primeiro Congresso Mundial de Ceratocone, uma das pessoas mais importantes do Congresso, o professor Theo Seiler, que veio de Zurich para cá para prestigiar o Congresso e realmente aumentar o nível científico. E a gente vai estar tá fazendo algumas perguntas para o professor Seiler sobre crosslink, uma vez que ele, é, juntamente com o grupo desde Dresden, quando ele ainda estava na Alemanha, começaram os estudos sobre crosslinking no mundo e realmente revolucionou a terapêutica do ceratocone. Então, thank you very much, Professor Geiger. It's a great pleasure. Welcome to Brazil. Welcome to Rio Preto. And my first question is that you could summarize the development of crosslinking. Tell us about the story on the dentist, how you developed that. And that's going to be very interesting for us to hear about that again. I mean, that, that was an easy story. I was with the dentist and he just filled in some holes. And after he had done this job, he just used his ultraviolet light and shine into my mouth. So I was asking, hey girl, what are you doing there? And he said, oh, I'm hardening it now. Uh, uh, and it took a week until it came to my mind that hardening means Hardening could also be done in the cornea, the keratoconus cornea, which, which is needed. And so we developed, I came to my staff um, when I was uh, chief of the Department of Ophthalmology in Dresden. And with Spurl, we sat together and looked for ways how to, we could harden the cornea. We could cross-link the cornea. And uh, it was very clear from the beginning that um, we would have to look for uh, methods which are not harmful to the cornea at all uh, because we do have other methods to do cross thinking with glutaraldehyde, Karnofsky solutions, uh, so with, with chemical uh, ways and aldehydes to do that but those are usually very invasive and so we look for ways to, um, to, to, to cross think the cornea in a less harmful way. One was Ribo, um, but one was riboflavin and ultraviolet, and the other one was, of course, um, glucose. Glucose is producing cross-linking in tissues, and so we did our first studies just using glucose solution, and indeed we had a four times hardening of the cornea. However, it took 20 days, and so that was not a good clinical solution. And then, uh, of course, then was the ultraviolet light, which has to be enhanced by uh, photoreactivation. Uh, and we use then uh, riboflavin because it's a non-toxic substance. It's natural vitamin inside the body anyway. It cannot be toxic in that way. And so um, we followed a lot of animal experiments and in vitro experiments to find out the right concentration to get an optimal effect. Great. And the first results you had, you published the, the follow-up of a long-term. What were the main benefits that the patients had with the cross-linking treatment? Well, that was only one main uh, effect of cross-linking. That was stabilization of the cornea. And uh, in prospective studies, uh, it turned out that in 97% of the cases we uh, we had an effect that there was no further progression of the keratoconus anymore. So that low failure rate, which is um, obviously less than the FDA requirement regarding um, f failures, um, is, is for the cross-thinking essential because you can promise the patient uh, that, uh, the, uh, that the Damocles sword over his head, that the keratoconus is going on and going on and going on, and that will be stopped. So in your practice, understanding that the cross-linking procedure will just stop progression of keratoconus and decrease a little bit the level of irregularity? Oh, or let's say it that way. I mean, we, we do have 37% um, of the patients who show a significant regression of the keratoconus going along with the regularization of the cornea. But that's something you cannot promise your patients. You can promise the patient that the keratoconus is stopped and there will be no further development of keratoconus going on. But uh, the regularization, which is a nice side effect, is something that you cannot anticipate. 
So, uh, in your practice today, which patients you indicate cross-linking? Are you uh, prefer to do it in a very early disease or in late disease? Oh, that, that, that is very easily decided. I mean, since we know that we can prevent only progression, we should do it as early as possible. So, that's number one. And the second thing is, uh, that is also the indication. I mean, if, if I have a patient with a progressive keratoconus, I first have to document the progression, of course, within one month, three months, six months, whenever. It's a slow progression or it's a, or it's a fast progression. But once the, the progression is documented by subsequent pentacams or topographies, then, of course, we are doing it right away. And I do not look at the age of a patient. So we're doing this in children up to 10 years. Um, it's a little bit difficult, but starting at 10, in 10, 10 years, I'm doing it without hesitation anymore. And um, regarding, uh, regarding guys older than 50 or 60 years, we just have to document progression. It's rare that we do have regression in those cases anymore. But even then, I would not hesitate to do the prostate. Great. And in the patients that are uh, not only progressing, but they already had a lot of irregularities, how you uh, you approach the patient to improve vision as well? I mean, this is a totally different story. Uh, Crosslinking can stop the progression, but then once you have stopped the progression of crosslinking, you still uh, have to select means for visual rehabilitation. That means. Uh, can regularize the cornea with the surface ablation, which is rather a fine-tuning instrument. You get better optics by using rings. Uh, high myopia can be treated by uh, fake IOLs. Um, and of course, there are other means than to intraocular clear lens exchange whenever it's depending on the age, of course. But visual rehabilitation is something that has to be added and can be done in one session, for example. Uh, once I'm removing the epithelium for cross-linking, I certainly would think of doing a surface ablation, if indicated. Um, or uh, once I'm doing the surgery regarding cross-linking, I also could slip in two rings to, to regularize the cornea. Um, but, but nevertheless, uh, the cross-linking's job is to stop the progression and to create a stable situation in the cornea, but visual rehabilitation um, is, 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 is a different question. So, looking at the cross-linking and cured cones progression, I ask me two situations. First, the patient is a female patient, a young female patient that has cured cones that decided to get pregnant. Will you indicate for her to do cross-linking before getting pregnant, or if it does, she doesn't know she's pregnant now, and you so you see the progression during pregnancy, or you approach the cross-linking during pregnancy? When you're in pregnancy, you shouldn't do any intervention at all. It's just a safety issue. But if she is coming and say, listen, um, I married last month, and I'm going to be pregnant during the next year, uh, I would ask her to, to uh, to delay the pregnancy until we have done the cross-linking because we know that there's a certain amount of, of, of female patients during pregnancy, they develop uh, real um, evolutions, strong evolutions of keratoconus, uh, which only in, a part, in, 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 only in a few patients is reversible after pregnancy. And so I would do, to, do, I would do the cross-linking right away as soon as possible and then tell the in both eyes, by the way, and tell then the patient that then after that time it's good to be pregnant, not before. Good. And in the cross-linking procedure, how is your technique today? Are you removing the epithelium? How? Um, you know, there are several approaches right now to save the epithelium, but none of them has been proven to be as effective as the standard uh, way to when you remove the epithelium, embed the cornea with a riboflavin until it's saturated, the cornea is saturated, and then start the 30 minute irradiation. This is still the gold standard, and that's what I'm using in the majority of the cases. In some cases where um, patients are very anxious and 
uh, you are not even sure that this patient really has a, has, has a strong progression. It might, it might also be a valuable option to, to use benzalkonium chloride 0.01% to, to, to digest the tight junction of the epithelium and then try to uh, inhibit the cornea so to a lesser degree with riboflavin and do the cross linking afterwards. But I mean, you always have to discuss it that this is for sure less effective. So I'm still using the standard approach, removing the epithelium and uh, let the patient suffer. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, another question, cross-linking has done first for stopping the progression of pure forms, but we know that we have other indications that may benefit from this treatment. Yes. Tell <clears throat> us about that, please. Uh, Oh, one, one major, um, say, application of cross-linking that is coming along is um, the treatment of infectious keratitis. Uh, we do have a prospective uh, multicenter study in, in Scandinavia going on, uh, and Mortensen have shown at the last congress in, in, in Leipzig that all every patient uh, with a non-treated uh, infection on, say, ter therapy refractive, refractory um, um, the keratitis, when he did the cross-linking, uh, the eye calmed down in every case, uh, the infection stopped in every case, and so it seems to be a very effective treatment um, in patients at least where you have no um, medical therapy uh, that is working. So the second application um, beyond keratitasia is melting. Corneal melting is in some cases a very bad disease because you cannot stop the melting, uh, such as Morbostelia. We have no good, no good therapy today in Morbostelia. In some of the Sjögren syndrome where you get melting of the cornea and you have no chance to stop that. In those cases, you should try also cross-linking because in, uh, in about 14 cases of melting that we did in, in, in Zurich, uh, we could stop the melting in every single